بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علوك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين So the next topic is loyalty and reliability. There is a difference between loyalty and reliability. Can you guess which one needs more uh, preparation and commitment? Certainly, loyalty is the bottom line. We cannot have some less than loyalty. But reliability seems to be even more. You cannot rely on someone who is not loyal, okay? That's clear. But is any loyal person reliable? Any reliable person is loyal. But is any loyal person reliable? Pardon? No. Can you, for example, mention a case or Example that maybe someone is loyal but not reliable. You know, imagine if a leader wants to accomplish a task for the group community. This task and uh, is something that needs, for example, expertise. Okay, or needs someone to have good contacts. Okay, for example, suppose he wants to negotiate with head of a state. Is it enough just to be loyal? No. You need to be loyal, but you need also to have experience. You have you have contacts. Maybe sometimes it needs resources. So. We cannot just be loyal. We need to make ourselves qualified so that leader can give us tasks and be sure that inshallah we are able to accomplish this. Okay? So if Imam Mahdi is going, for example, to give some medical task, I need to be a person who is medically trained and experienced. If he wants to give me some construction task, I need to be... So in our community, we need to have diverse kind of skills and experiences so that Imam can rely on us. Yeah? He can have peace of mind that this person knows what we need to do and has the experience, contacts, everything, and inshallah he will accomplish this task as much as a human being of course you know can be trusted it's not that hundred percent this person can do but at least he's prepared okay so sometimes I use this example I say uh, inshallah we will explain this more companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam they were all loyal to the extent that Imam says, I don't know any companions better and more loyal than my companions. Shall we talk about it? But maybe some of them were not that qualified that Imam could assign them a task. For example, say, you would be the commander. Yeah? But some of them were very loyal, but at the same time, people that Imam could rely on them. You know, a leader very much always needs people that can rely on them, so that can have peace of mind, so focuses on other things. Okay? So, for example, Hazrat Abbas, peace be upon him, was not only loyal, but he was someone that Imam could rely on him. 
Yeah? So Imam Ghazali said, okay, if I give him a task, I don't need to worry. I, he knows what to do, how to approach, how to finish. So there's a difference. Therefore, in Ziyarat Jama'a, we say to Imams, وَنُسْرَةِ لَكُمْ مُعَدَّةٌ my help for you is prepared. What does it mean is prepared? Means if you need some help which requires some study, I have done it. If it requires some work experience, I have made it. If you need to know people in the field, I know them. So my help is prepared. Not that potentially I am able to help you, but you have to wait. If you give me a task, you know, I go and learn <laughs> and then we'll do it. And of course, not everyone can be prepared for all the tasks. So as a community, we have to make sure that we have taken care of all the needs. Yeah. We cannot all, for example, specialize in one field. We need to specialize in different fields, especially those things that you need to do it yourself. Because for example, there are things, I don't want to underestimate any job, but for example, if you need, I don't know, construction, if you don't have someone from us, we can, you know, employ. Yeah? But there are things which are very sensitive. And we need to definitely have people from ourselves. You know, so the tasks are different. Of course, it's very good if we have from every field in our community, but there are priorities. Some of the things only a person from community can do it for us because we cannot trust others. Some of the things are somehow neutral. So this is the difference between reliability and Loyalty. So, reliability is a higher level than loyalty. Uh, there is a hadith also here about commitment. Uh, because sometimes maybe we say, you know, we are ready, whatever you say, you know, we'll do it, but it needs real commitment. This hadith is very beautiful. Imam Bakr alayhi salam said, one day my father, which is Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, Ask his companions, would any of you be willing to hold a piece of fiery coal in your hand until it becomes cool? <laughs> Everyone kept silence. Then I asked, Imam Bakr says, Oh my father, do you command me to do it? So Imam Bakr was happy to do it. My father said, I didn't refer to you. Indeed, you are from me and I am from you. It's them that I want to know about. <laughs> so he was sure that Imam Bagher would be doing it, but he said, I wanted to test them. And then Imam said, Ma aksar al wa aqal al how much talk and how little action there is. Many people claim that, you know, we are ready for Imam Mahdi, you know, please come. But are we ready for that? Are we fully obedient? Then Imam said, indeed the people of action are few in number. Though I know people who both act and talk, it is as if the earth has taken them inside. So those who have both action. Imam said they disappeared. Almost no one is left from those people that say and then do it. Imam Kazim also said, لو ميزت شيعتي لم أجدهم إلا واصفة. If I examine my Shia, I would not find them except that they just talk. Of course, not everyone, but means this is a general situation. He explains later. 
If I test them, I will not find them except Murtad. Murtad is an apostate, someone who would leave. ولو تمحصتهم لما خلص من الألف واحد. If I filter them from one thousand, maybe one person remains. Yeah. So why we don't have three hundred thirteen helpers? Maybe we have you know tens of millions, but we need that quality. ولو غربلتهم غربلة لم يبغ منهم إلا ما كان لي. If I filter them, would not remain except those who are from me. Means, of course, my son, for example, would be there. Some people from me would be there, but in the large community, not many people. Okay. طالما تكوا على الأرائك. The Shia have taken rest for too long. <laughs> you know, uh, Imam said they are, you know, uh, having rest by, you know, putting their back on the pillow. You know, as an example of being resting. They say we are Shia of Ali. إِنَّمَا شِيَعَةُ عَلِي مَنْ صَدَّقَ قَوْلُهُ فِعْلَهُ the Shia of Ali are those whose words confirm, sorry, whose actions confirm their words. Yeah? Whatever they say, they do it. Maybe now, alhamdulillah, the situation is better, but still, because even, you know, the people who are happy to give their life, still they cannot say we passed the test because sometimes people are happy to give their life but if the leader says all of a sudden now we have to for example stop the war they say no we are here to fight we are not here you know to for example have peaceful negotiation so you need someone that when imam says go go let said don't go doesn't go without any hesitation Now, companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam are considered as a group, the most loyal companion, as a group. So we don't want to say there was no person who was more loyal than every person or any person in the group. For example, maybe Salman was more loyal than some of the companions of Imam Hussein. Maybe Ammar was more loyal than some of the companions of Imam Hussein. But as a group, as a group, no other group is similar to this group. Even companions of the Prophet were different. They were not all the same. Companions of Amir al -Mumin, Imam Hassan, yeah? So Imam Hussein alayhi salam said, إني لا أعلم أصحابا أوفا ولا خيرا من أصحابي. I don't know of any companions who are more loyal and better than mine. Because these people, then I have explained, these people knew that there is going to be no militant victory they are not going to survive yeah so they had no chance of winning the battle they knew that this is said in the night of ashura everyone knew in the night of ashura that there is no way that they can win so there is no chance of winning there's no chance of getting any you know land any booty nothing even Maybe something which is very much adding to this equation is that Imam told them, you can go. 
He said that Imam said, you know, you should stay with me in the night of Ashura. He said, you can go and you can take some of my family members to make them feel, you know, comfortable, not, you know, feel there's any pressure. Imam didn't want anyone to remain there as embarrassment, shyness, you know. So he made it very clear. He, he asked, you know, there will be darkness, no light. So that in the night and the darkness of the room, they can leave Imam and go. And still, they didn't leave. And they said, even if you are you know, going to die again and again, we are not going to leave. And they proved this. Uh, because sometimes you say this, but when the time comes, if you are weak, you cannot do something. Yeah? Uh, you heard this uh, story that the late Mullah Muhsin Faiz Kashani, one of our great ulama, he was wondering why Imam Hussein said this. He knew that this is correct, but he wanted to understand. So then he had a dream that was day of Ashura. He was standing before Imam Hussein to support him. But as soon as arrow was approaching him, he was bending. An arrow was hitting Imam. Then, then he was, you know, very sad. The next time I'm not going, you know, to bend. But again, he was bending. So he realized that it's not easy to be like companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam because they were so strong. Not only they wanted, they managed to do it. Many people, even if they want. When the time of pressure comes, they leave. Even sometimes they cannot even as, you know, think. Then there is panic. If you are weak, you cannot you know, remain cool and you know, do things that they did. Now, the next issue that I want to discuss is that in our model of followership, there is no place for asabiyya. What is asabiyya? Means bias. Okay? As we talked about sincerity, that we said everything is for the sake of Allah. We should not do something just to promote our group or ourselves. Yes, if it is pleasing to Allah, it's okay. Yeah, but if it is not pleasing to Allah, for example, by bringing other groups down, this is not sincere. Okay, we talked about it. Now also, it's very much related. Loyalty without bias. Okay? So, if we have a cause, if we have a work, for example, you know, we are in KLC. And we think this is a gift of Allah, we should, you know, support it. But we should not do it in a biased way. That if there is any problem in our group or our people, we close our eyes. And then we just see problems in others and, you know, try to undermine them. This is not good. This way of supporting an Islamic cause is not Islamic. Okay? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Man ta'assaba Aw tu'assiba lah Faqad khala'a rabq ribqat al-eeman min unuqih The one who exerts by us Or the one on whose behalf it is exerted For example sometimes I am biased, sometimes I allow people to be biased for me. Yeah? Say, no, they are promoting me. No. You should not allow people to be biased for you. Okay? Therefore, in this model of followership, sometimes leader is happier that some of the people leave. Because, you know, we don't want just quantity. If you are biased, Leave us. We don't want to be biased. Okay? But you can be loyal, but not biased. <laughs> so these are very important. 
the tie of faith is taken off his neck. This one is also worrying, you know. Man kana fi qalbihi habbatun min khardalin min asabiyya. Ba'athahu Allahu yawm al-qiyamah ma a'rab al-jahiliyya. Whoever possesses in his heart bias even to the extent of a mustard seed, God will raise him on the day of resurrection with the pagan Bedouins. Bedouins, Arab is different from Arabs. Arab means, uh, you know, those who are, for example, speaking Arabic, etc. Arab means those Bedouins who were uh, pagans and had no knowledge of Islam. And many of them were pagans, or if they embraced Islam, they had very superficial. It doesn't apply to all Bedouins. It's a particular group at that time. Also, Rasulullah said, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ دَعَى إِلَىٰ عَصَبِيَّةِ وَلَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ قَاتَلَ عَلَىٰ عَصَبِيَّةِ وَلَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ مَاتَ عَلَىٰ عَصَبِيَّةِ One who promotes bias is not from us. One who fights for a biased cause is not from us. One who dies with bias is not from us. Only haq, only truth, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be our concern. Okay? So for example, if I fight because, for example, anything personal, anything, you know, tribal, this is not for the sake of haq. There is a beautiful definition of asabiya by Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Because some people may think it means that we should not have any love, for example, for our country or our group or, you know, ethnicity. No. It's a matter of not seeing the truth and not recognizing rights of others. Otherwise, to love your people is okay. Al-asabiyyatu allati ya'thamu alayha sahibuha the bias by which a person commits a sin, so the, the level of bias that makes you sinful, and yara rajul shirara qawmihi khayran min khayara qawmin akharin. When someone from your group is very bad, you, you consider him better than good people from other groups. Yeah? Someone in our group is a very bad person. And in other groups, there are people better than him, but we say no, because he's from us, he's better. You know, many political groups are like this. If there is a candidate in another party which is better, they don't want that person. Someone from our group, even if this person is not qualified, not experienced, yeah? The main thing is that it must be someone from our group. Even sometimes inside the group, someone from our part of the group. <laughs> yeah, because some parties have different wings, different you know, fractions. Laysa min al-asabiyya an yuhibba rajulu qawmahu. If you love your people, this is not bias. Okay, you can love your people. وَلَكِنْ مِنَ الْأَصَبِيَّةِ أَنْ يُعِينَ قَوْمَهُ عَلَى الظُّلْمِ But bias is to help your people to do injustice. To take rights of other people. Okay? So, I can love you as, for example, a community member, as a person from my ethnicity, but I cannot help you and support you to do bad things because you are from us. Okay? So, 
whoever wants to become a true Shia has a difficult but sacred work to do. You know, in uh, politics, in uh, sometimes business, uh, people just want to increase their followers. Sometimes, you know, they don't bother is this person honest or not. So, you know, at, as long as it's working for he's working for us, it's fine. But this is not our model. Our model is to only attract very good people. Yes, there can be some people not in the close circle. They can benefit as much as, but don't let people to come to close circle if they are not qualified, yeah, especially if they are not sincere, if they are not uh, loyal, if they are not pious, okay? If they are biased. So whoever wants to become a true Shia has a difficult but sacred work to do. It's not easy to develop loyalty, obedience, and a strong identity. Okay, we need all this. And at the same time, remaining free from bias. It's not easy. They look like contradictory. You want to have a strong identity, but you are told not to be biased. Some may even find these goals contradictory. However, if we look deeper, we will see that they are connected at the root. They are not contradictory, actually they are all connected with each other. It is ego that prevents one from being loyal and obedient. It is ego that would lead to bias. Everything comes down to a single fundamental choice. You are familiar with my point about truth, yeah? In some lectures, like Jose lectures, indicators of piety, I have said that the most fundamental value in Islam is to be truthful. Everything goes back to being truthful. So, ego or truth, Ego says, don't bother about the truth. Serve yourself. Serve your group. Serve your tribe. The truth says, no. Serve the truth. If your people are people of truth, help them. If they are against the truth, don't help them. Yeah, maybe there is a foreigner from another part of the world. He's with the truth, so I should be with him. There is someone in my family who is not with the truth. I should not support him. Commitment to the truth is necessary for anyone who wants to be a helper of the Hujja of Allah. Allah Ta'ala Hujja of Allah is the sign of the truth. Okay, so if you want to be able to join Imam Mahdi and remain with Imam, because some people sometimes manage to join Imams, but they didn't manage to remain with Imams. Some people left Amirul Mumin, some people left Imam Hassan, some people even left Imam Hussein on the way. Yeah, the army at the beginning was not this small, the group was not this small. So, to join Imam and to remain with Imam, you need to be truthful. For you, the truth must be the most important thing. The struggle of choosing Haq over our ego is the most important struggle of our life. Any other struggle comes under this. Okay? So what is the struggle? Hat and bottle, but bottle comes through ego. Failure in this struggle would destroy all our achievements and succeedings in this. And it is worth any difficulty and pain. If you want to achieve this, maybe there's pain, but it's worse. 
Okay. Now, inshallah, we discuss the next quad. Just we begin. And that is truthfulness. So we reached the topic of truthfulness. You have heard this hadith uh, from me in several lectures. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, لا تغتروا بصلاتهم ولا بصيامهم When you want to assess someone, of course this applies to yourself as well. You should not even be deceived by yourself. When you see they are fasting or praying, you say, MashaAllah, he's very good. This person is fasting, this person is praying, maybe when he's praying Jama'ah, yeah? But Imam Sadaq says, don't be deceived. These are not enough. These are very good, but these are not enough. فَإِنَّ الرَّجُلُ رُبَمَا لَهِجَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالصَّوْمِ حَتَّى لَوْ تَرَكَهُ إِسْتَوْهَشَ Sometimes people have become accustomed to something, are used to doing something, yeah? For example, all their life they have done prayer and fasting. It has become a habit. If they don't do it, they feel bad. This is why you see some people, for example, they are very ill or they are traveling up to certain distance. They should not fast. But they say, I have to fast. I have always been fa fasting. Okay, this year you are ill and this fasting is harmful for your health. No, I have to fast. So what's the value of this fasting? The same one who told you to fast says not to fast now. But it seems that you have developed so much attachment to your fasting that even if Allah says, I don't want you to fast, he says, no, I have to fast. Okay? So this person from childhood has been praying. Now if he doesn't say uh, his prayer, it feels very bad. But is he a good Shia necessarily? Okay? Those who don't pray and don't fast, certainly they have problem. Okay? Those who don't say prayer, they have problems. But those who say prayer and fast, they still may have problems. These are not adequate. Imam says, وَلَكِنْ اِخْتَبِرُوهُمْ عِنْدَ صِدْقِ الْحَدِيثِ وَأَدَاءِ الْأَمَانَةِ If you want to examine someone to see whether he's a good mu'min or mu'min that we can become friends, we can work together, yeah? Or if you want to, for example, marry your son or daughter to someone, to some family. If you want to do some business together. Yes, if this person is not praying or fasting is a problem. But don't say, okay, Alhamdulillah, he's praying and fasting, that's enough. No. Test them. Are they committed to telling the truth? Or they may cheat, they may tell lies. And also, delivery of trust. Are they trustworthy or not? Okay? And then you see that how virtues are very fundamental. Uh, in 40 hadiths, we had this idea. In Hose of uh, Hose Akhlaq series, we had this discussion also in the first year that virtues are more important than actions. Even Imam Khomeini says, reward and punishment for virtues and vices are much stronger than good actions or bad actions. Okay? So if, for example, if someone has a generous act, and if someone has generosity, which one is more important? generosity 
A generous act is appreciated, is rewarded, but if you are generous, it's different. To the extent that if someone is truly generous, may not go to hell. Like Hatamitai. Hatamitai was Mushrik, was a polytheist. But because he was genuinely generous, our hadith say that he's not going to hell. Hatamitai. He was a pagan. He lived before Islam. His son was during the life of Prophet and with his sister, Odai or Adi, son of Hatamitai and his sister, they were in one of the battles and Muslim arrested them. The Prophet released the son of Hatam because of his father's generosity. Before Islam, he was generous, but it's appreciated. So even if a polytheist, an atheist is generous, we appreciate it. It's not that we say it's useless. But does he go with this to heaven? That's another issue. For heaven, there are other requirements. But maybe he's not going to be punished, even if he was a mushrik. If he is genuinely generous. And some scholars say, of course, this needs more discussion that any person who has one of the virtues to the excellence may not go to hell any virtue for example it can be generosity it can be truthfulness a kindness yeah honesty and the argument is that because these are attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person manages to become manifestation of one of the attributes of Allah, that would save him from punishment. Okay? And normally these people, if you have really even one of the attributes of Allah in excellence in you, normally you become a good person. Even if you are not very outstanding in other qualities, yeah? For example, you cannot be very generous and do injustice. Because someone who is generous is giving his rights to the people, yeah? How can then this person take from other people's rights? Even a generous person, I don't think is going to tell lies. If someone is very generous, would not tell lies. Because most of people who tell lies, they want to get something. This person is giving away. So these qualities lead to each other. So Imam Sadiq says, if you want to test people, <clears throat> test them with Sadq al-Hadith wa Ada'il Amana. And now you realize. Why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was known as As-Sadiq al-Amin even before Islam? Because these are two outstanding qualities and for sure Rasulullah had these qualities which then qualified him to become prophet. If Rasulullah was not Sadiq al-Amin, he could not become a prophet especially to deliver this message which is very much based on virtues and he said can someone accomplish noble traits of character if he himself is not a person who has great character no so if you want imam mahdi to choose you and accept you what should you do? Qualify yourself with Sadq al Hadith wa Ada'il Amana. And then, inshallah, other qualities. But these are two fundamental. Okay. 
What's the time? 9.30? Okay. We have some uh, other hadith about truthfulness and other qualities. So, inshallah, we continue the discussion in Mashad. I stop now. If you have some questions, uh, we can, inshallah, answer questions. And then uh, you will have a short break next lecture. And then, inshallah, get ready if you want to pack or whatever. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So reliability requires loyalty plus being someone who has some experience, some tasks, some contacts, that maybe resources that can help with the mission. So each of us, we need to qualify ourselves as much as we can. Yeah. For example, if you can learn another language, depending on what is you know, your, I mean, contribution. For example, maybe for some people, if they are good for communication, on behalf of community and imam, they need to learn other languages, they need maybe to learn certain, I don't know, uh, media studies, journalism, etc. So don't be satisfied with what you have. Try to make yourself more qualified, more resourceful to help. Of course, we should then bring this to the community because if you say, you know, I only give it when Imam comes, it's not going to work. We need to give this to the community so that inshallah Imam comes. So don't be satisfied. If you are the best professor of your city, become the best professor of your country. If you are the, I don't know, most successful businessman in the country, try to be the most successful businessman in the continent, in the whole world. We need the Shia to rise and excel, okay? Not only in money, in whatever can contribute to the betterment of humanity and our community and success of the mission. Of course, don't, uh, you know, do this by putting your family life at risk, your spirituality at risk. You know, all things should be together. Uh, but don't be also satisfied with what you have learned, the skills you have developed so far. If there is a way to make a little bit more improvement to yourself, do it. Because we need our people to always rise. In one uh, retreat, we had this discussion about ambition. You remember... I don't know was which year it was before COVID. Maybe ambition is very important. This one. Thank you, Shaykh, for the yeah. great content. Um, it seems that you, you mentioned that uh, there's always a struggle between choosing truthfulness and evil. Mm. It seems that sometimes when we do. When we choose truthfulness, there's always still an inkling of ego within us. Sometimes we, we try to purify our actions, but there's still maybe 10% ego, 1% ego. Uh, and uh, the hadith that you mentioned about those that pray, and maybe it's, they're, just, they're just getting used to it, it's a habit. Yeah. Maybe it's part of it is for the ego. Um, is there any practical advice? This connects a bit with sincerity. Practical advice to eliminate, completely eliminate ego from the equation. Just like Imam Ali and Bawa Fenka, when he got spat on, he took some time, took a step back, and really made sure to eliminate any inkling. So, how can we get there? So, when you do things only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your ego becomes smaller and smaller. And 
we have lots of areas that we can exercise this. For example, in family. Husband and wife have lots of opportunity to reduce their ego. <laughs> yeah? Because you live together and always another person maybe has another idea. So it's a good exercise to reduce your ego. Okay? I, I think I told you this story in some lectures that a young man asked his father, you know, to arrange marriage for him, saying, I want to get married, you know. He said, apologize. He was surprised. I didn't say anything bad. I didn't do anything. I just asked you for your blessing and you find someone or help me. He said, apologize. So he left. Then... Another time, again, he said, apologize. Finally, after a few times, he said, I apologize, you know, I said, you know, something wrong. <laughs> then his father said, now you can marry. When you can apologize without knowing why. <laughs> now is the right time to marry. Yeah. Because if you want to understand your mistake, many times you cannot understand your mistake. Yeah, because you are so much loving yourself. It's not that many people know that they are wrong and they don't apologize. Many people even don't know they are wrong because they have so much ego that they cannot even understand. They know they have problems at work, at home, but they don't know why. Why everyone is bad with me? What is wrong with people? No one appreciates me. It's like someone who drives on the wrong side of motorway and says, why everyone is you know, driving today, you know, wrong way? Because we love ourselves, we cannot even see our problems. So if you are able to apologize, even when you don't know, then inshallah you can start now seeing the problem. You see, yes, there is something that I should apologize. So family life can be a good place to learn how to overcome ego instead of making your ego stronger by demanding always from the other party you try to give away as much as you can to make other people happy sometimes between parents and children especially if you have teenagers sometimes it's very good to get rid of ego they so much you know humble you <laughs> And, you know, even your basic rights and respect sometimes can be compromised. But for the sake of Allah, you know you have to be patient. Yeah? Inshallah, after a few years, they understand. Now I have to be patient. The way sometimes, you know, you are treated sometimes with some, by some teenagers, you know, your children. Even enemies may not, you know, treat you like that. You know, some of them are very bad with the parents. Just now I was coming, the taxi driver was telling me that his son, you know, treated his mother very badly. And he said, you know, I said, if next time you treat your mother like this, you know, I will, you know, ask you to leave. So he said his, his mother is very, you know, kind to them, very sacrificing. But this son now is doing this with his mother. So this can happen, but you learn how to remain, you know, in control of your emotions, not to, because if sometimes, you know, you do something bad, the relation will damage. And the other side is not very naive. Who is going to show more sacrifice? You, yeah? Many times, those who are more understanding, they need to be more patient at work. I don't know, with people who work for you, under you, you know, study with you, sometimes you have to be patient, patient, patient. This is an exercise for getting rid of ego. You are not losing. So, any, any relation has an element of truth or falsehood. Okay? For example, we have a discussion at home, which house we should, for example, rent 
to stay or which country okay which should we go to this holiday or now any should we buy this furniture or not anything may look something very simple something which is not important but indeed every decision is an element of you either working for the truth or for ego even if this is a small decision in family i can use this to get closer to allah or i can fail okay so day and night we are given lots of opportunities if you like because this can be opportunities for those who win for those who lose these are you know troubles but we have lots of opportunities to be careful to leave our ego aside so if you do this for many years for every decision every relation every reaction you try to just consider the truth and the pleasure of allah your ego goes down Alaikum as wa rahmatullah. In the context of uh, loyalty, yes. I just had a question on suspicion. Suspicion. Yeah. For example, if I want to uh, consult with somebody, for example, a family member, or even it could be a brother, uh, or even you know, giving a, uh, or trusting something with a brother, I find myself that I need to be selective. Yeah. And that's the number of people that can do that work. And this requires you to be suspicious. Can you specify, is this type of suspicion, is this negative? Or, because, or is this suspicion, is suspicion required in this process? You don't need to be suspicious, especially when it comes to believers. Don't be suspicious, but be careful. If you are suspicious, this is a negative state of mind. Because when you are suspicious, the first assumption is that something is wrong unless it is proved otherwise. When you are suspicious, even if that person does something good, you can misunderstand. Okay? For example, if someone is very kind, you say maybe he's covering something. If you are suspicious. But be careful. I mean, the sense that don't be naive. If you want to, for example, entrust someone with something valuable, I don't know if you want to consult someone, be careful, but not suspicious. So there's a difference between to be precocious, careful, and being suspicious. The same thing we say in the interface, you know, we say, don't be suspicious about people of other faith or sex, but be careful. Not everyone is good. Be careful. Take time, collect evidence. But the only time you need to be suspicious if you are dealing with the people who have established bad history, then for those kind of people. But many believers, I don't know them well, so I don't need to be suspicious, but I need to be careful. Don't just say because he's a mu'min or mu'mina on the surface is enough. Is he a true mu'min or mu'mina or not? Okay, uh, our time unfortunately is over. So you have a short break inshallah and then uh, the next class will start inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. Oh, my